Good morning, Michigan. Good morning, Stanford. It is your girl, Miss Gordon, here. First, I'm going to start off with saying thank you to everyone who completed all of their work last week. That's how you were able to make it to our Friday Zoom parties. Excuse me. In order to make it to our Friday Zoom parties, make sure you get all of your work in for the whole week. Even if you have to go back, you have to make sure that your work is all in from Monday to Friday, Monday to Thursday, not Friday, Monday to Thursday. Make sure you complete all of your work, even if it does not get done on that exact day. Say, for instance, it's Tuesday, you forgot to do Monday's work. As long as you go back and have it completed by Thursday, you will be invited to our Zoom parties on Friday. So, now we're going to get into our scholars who got 100% on their math quiz last week. These scholars got 100%. Let's see if you made the team. First, we got Cameron Brewer. Nice job. We got Mr. Antonio, Miss Jada, Mr. Ryan, Miss Denim Barnes. We got Mr. Jacoby, Miss Cynthia. We got Mr. Robbie. We have Miss Milani, Mr. Ron O'Neill. We have Miss Kalia Williams. Name, nice job. Brianna up there at the top. We got Mr. Dylan. Nice job. We got Miss Naima. We have Mr. Nicholas. And then we have Miss Dariana. Who will join this club next week? Will it be you? All you have to do is try your best, work hard, think about everything that we learned, and get 100% on your quiz this week. Also, be on the lookout one of these days for a little surprise that Ms. Gordon has for you. So be on the lookout for which day she has a surprise. In order to figure out where this surprise may be, you need to look on your stream every single day. That's the, at the top of your screen. It'll say stream on your Google Classroom. Look there every single day to see if the surprise is coming for that day. Let's get into our work. Today, we're going to be talking about modeling equivalency with models. We're going to be talking about modeling equivalency with models. Say it with me. Modeling equivalency with models. Let's think about it. What do we know about the word equivalent? What do we know about the word equivalent? Who can tell me? Nicholas, can you tell me? Antonio, can you tell me? Jacoby, can you tell me? Tyreek, can you tell me? Mr. Ethan, can you tell me? What do we know about equivalent? When you get it, say it to yourself. Now, shout it at the screen. I can't hear you. Say it even louder. Nice job. If you said that equivalent fractions take up the same amount of space, that's the same thing for our decimals. Our decimals are another way to write our fractions, so that means that their decimals take up the same amount of space. Take up the, take up the, nice job. We need to think about the operations that we use to find equivalent fractions. We use multiplication and we use division. We use, we use, Good job. We use those, and these are our operations that we need to think about when we're thinking about equivalent fractions and equivalent decimals. Equation that we use, uh-oh, my little video is blocking it out, but the equation that we use to find equivalent fractions is going to be the same equation that we're going to use to find equivalent decimals. If multiply or divided by with equals NIF. Who remembers that? Say it with me. We made a B. Remember if? Multiplied and divided by with equals NIF. Here we go. If divided and multiplied by with equals NIF. One time. If divided and multiplied by with equals NIF. That's telling us that the initial fraction, that's the fraction that they already give us. That means that's the fraction that's already on our paper. Multiply or divided by your whole fraction. What does whole fraction mean? What is a whole fraction? Jacoby, can you tell me what a whole fraction is? Alyssa Bella, can you tell me what a whole fraction is? Naima, can you tell me what a whole fraction is? Even my girl, Ariana Johnson Bryant, can you tell me what a whole fraction is? Think about it. Lamaria, talk to us. What's a whole fraction? 
Nice job, girl. If you say the whole fraction is a fraction that has the same numerator and denominator, you are perfectly correct. That's our whole fraction. We divide or multiply by that whole fraction to get to our new fraction. Let's keep going. So this is an example of what we'll see. You actually have this example done for you already in today's work, but I'm gonna walk you through how we need to complete this. So this is our first example that we're gonna look at. The decimal notation that we have, I'm gonna take us to another, I'm gonna take us to another form, good. So the decimal notation that we have is point zero point three. We have 0 0.3. If I'm thinking back to that place value chart with decimals that I know and that Ms. Gordon put in our resource tab, Ms. Gordon has also attached it to this work and this work, I'm going to know that hmm, the first place value after the decimal point is the tenth place. Good, it's the tenth place. I'm making sure to pronounce that T-H-S at the end. So I know that there are three, uh oh, let's make it a fraction. Let me delete that. So when I make it a fraction, that's a little hard for me, but it's okay. Oh, search, fraction. You're gonna be writing your things out. So I'm gonna make it not even, great. We know that it's gonna be three tenths. This is three over 10. I know it's 3 over 10. I know it's 3 over 10 because the 3 stops at the tenths place, meaning that it stops at the first decimal point to the right of the decimal. I mean, it stops at the first place value to the right of the decimal. Whew. This word is just messing up here, but that's okay. Say, that's okay. That's okay. Thank you. So we have 3 tenths. So the first thing that I did was I found the fraction. I found the, I found the, I found the, I found the fraction for the decimal that they already gave me. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to find the fraction, find the, find the, for the decimal they already give you. Next thing we're going to do is if I look at the top of my paper, it says I know that I'm modeling equivalents of decimal tenths and hundredths. Tenths and hundreds. This is telling me that my new denominator, my new denominator will be 100. My new denominator will be 100. Hmm. So if we look down at our worksheet, we're only thinking about denominators of 10 and 100 and all of them, 10 and 100. We're only thinking about denominators with the place value of tenths and hundredths. Tenths and hundredths. So here's my question. If I know that in my initial fraction, I have a denominator of 10, and in my new fraction, I have a denominator of 100, what operation do you think I'm going to use to get from 10 to 100? Wait a minute, let me ask you one more time. What operation do you think I'm going to use to get from 10 to 100? On to, one, two, multiplication. You are exactly right. I'm going to multiply. I'm going from a smaller value to a greater value. So here's my question. Now we're thinking about that whole fraction. Remember, the whole fraction has the same numerator and denominator. So what times 10? gets me to 100. This is a fast fast. What times 10 equals, equals, equals. If you said 10, you are absolutely, you are absolutely correct. And I know if I have 10 at the bottom, I'm also going to need, uh oh, this word messed up, 10 at the top. Nice job, because that's our whole fraction. So we have our if initial fraction times our with it's going to equal our new fraction. So if we have 10 times 10 equals 100, we know that 3 times 10, super easy, is going to equal 30. Equal. Nice job. Uh-oh, I messed that up. There we go. So we know that 3 tenths 
is equivalent to 30 tenths because they take up the same amount of space. They take up the... So now that we found those fractions, now we need to go back and think about, hmm, three tenths as a decimal is equivalent to what? Yeah, I already know that three tenths as a fraction is equivalent to 30 hundredths. So how would I write out 30 hundredths as a decimal? 30 hundredths as a decimal. Hmm. I'm going to think about that place value chart with decimals I have. I know I need to have three. So I'm going to do 0 0.30. 0 0.30 is the same thing as 30 hundredths. It's the same thing as 30 hundredths. So now all we're going to do is just fill in that grid model. I know that this is 10. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to shade in how many of 10. How many of 10 are going to shade in? If you said three, you are correct. Nice job. So we have one, two, three. We have shaded in three tenths. Now we're thinking about our hundred. This is a hundredth grid. We have 10 going down and 10 going across. How many of hundreds, hundredths are you going to shade in? Good, you said 30. Let's shade in 30 hundreds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh oh, go back up. Twelve. Uh oh, twelve. Uh oh, gotta press it. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Go over. Who we're almost done. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. What do you notice about the model of tenths and the model of hundredths? How can we tell that they are equivalent? What do you notice and how can we tell that they're equivalent? Ramarion, I would love to hear from you. Talk to us. Okay. But Marvion said that he knows that they're equivalent because he can tell that they take up the same amount of space. They take up the same amount of space, so that's how we know they're equivalent. Now we need to move on to our disk model. These are just circles that model the same thing as our grid. So I know that I have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hmm. How many of the tenths am I going to shade in? One, two, uh-oh, sometimes it's going to take me a little while to make them fit, but that's okay. Two, and they're not perfect, but nothing is, and that's okay. But as you can see, Miss Gordon tried her best to shade in three of out of ten. She said in three out of ten because it's our decimal and our front tell us we have three out of ten. Now we can shade in how many hundreds. Okay, when you're drawing this model, remember, make sure you put those tick marks in between. This right here, this line here equals one. Small line equals two, three, four, five. Sorry, I messed that up. Inside, this little first tick mark is one, two, three, four. This longer one is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This whole box, this whole piece of slice, sorry, equals ten. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That's because we inputted those tick marks in between each of those piece of slices. So now we know that we need to shade in 30 of the hundreds. 30 of the hundreds. So I'm going to use those same little piece of slices I used up there. Make them look as much nicer as I can. Let's see if we can get it in there. That's one. Let's see if we can get this in there. Got to drag it. If you're using your computer, that is totally fine. Make sure that I can tell what you are shading in. If you're writing this out, make sure that you input your tick marks. 
That's the only way I'm going to know if you know what the value is. We got one. We got two the best that we can. And then one more or three. Let's turn this around. We got 10, 20, 30. Now we have shaded in 30. We have shaded in 30. This is going to be the gist of your lesson for today and for the rest of the week. You're thinking about how can we find the equivalent decimals? How can we find the equivalent? How can we find the equivalent? And my hint for you, in order to find the equivalent decimal, make sure you find the equivalent fraction first. In order to find the equivalent decimal, make sure you find the equivalent fraction first. I cannot wait, oops, excuse me, I cannot wait to see the amazing work you do and who's going to join that 100% club on the quiz and who's going to turn in all of their work this week. You are doing an amazing job. Keep it up. If you need me, let me know. You can have your parent text or call me or you can write me a comment and I will get back to you. Have a good day. I will see you soon.